The first things you're going to need, of course, is the mixer, and you're going to need uh, a power amp and a speaker because this is only like a preamp signal. So you're going to need a power amp to boost the signal, and then from the power amp, you need to go into a speaker. For today's um, demonstration, I'm going to be using a powered speaker, the Yamaha DXR10. And my input is already here, and here is the level control. So once this is powered up, the signal coming from the mixer is going to be going into this channel here. I could, if the mixer had it, go into the XLR channel up above, but it doesn't have an output for XLR, so we're just going to use the standard one quarter. Now, <clears throat> the other things you're going to need, you're going to need a microphone, of course, for this demonstration. This is a Shure SM58. This is an industry standard mic. You're going to need a microphone cable or cord with your XLRs on the end. And you're going to need a patch cord to go from the mixer up to the powered speaker. <clears throat> now, uh, first thing we're going to do is uh, going to uh, show you this where to plug in uh, the mixer cable that's being sent out to the powered speaker up above there. Basically on this board you will see over in this side here main out left and right. Now for the purposes of this demonstration consider this board mono because I have all the left and right channels set to center so it's basically getting the same signal in left and right technically. We'll get them a little bit more into that later on as to uh, the stereo channels over here which you can have two separate injections left and right for these channels here 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12. So anyway we're going to put the mixer output main out here we're going to put it in the left channel doesn't matter if it's left or right but if you're using stereo you do have left and right but as for this purpose we're running mono we are going to inject the signal out of here and into the cabinet up above now this is the cord that technically I just set up over on uh, over here and up to the powered speaker now I'm going to prepare the microphone I'm going to uh, plug this in <clears throat> excuse me and I'm going to take the other channel the other plug and put it into the low impedance input on channel one I'm going to find it there it is now I'm going to insert the microphone into a mic stand so I don't have to be handling that anymore because that's going to be a bit cumbersome if I got to be doing that all the time so bear with me the next thing you're going to want to do before you plug anything in either the mixer or a powered speaker is to make sure your levels are all down everything there's a preamp gain here I'm going to, have to turn everything down and I'm going to take the slider which is the main out and turn it down I'm going to apply power to the mixer uh, to, the, to the mixer first and then put power on the main speaker and keep the level on the main powered speaker down and eventually you can bring up the levels according according to when you have your sound set up now I have just applied power to the mixer via the transformer or the adapter that's plugged in here and into uh, an AC outlet and I also have the power amp turned on and I'm going to check the level on this now to make sure it's just going to turn it up a bit for this demonstration there you go now we are ready to start mixing down the microphone now this is in channel one which is right here and um, for all intents and purposes if you are doing any mixing you definitely want to be using your XLRs and I have a unit over here which allows you no matter what channel what, what you're inputting you can use this it's called a direct box and this is the Ultra DI by Behringer and basically what you do with this this runs on phantom power off this board you can send in a low impedance signal here which is the input and it transforms it to a low impedance and then from this low impedance 
you'd run a cord into one of these channels. So this here allows you to take um, a high impedance quarter inch cord and convert it over to low impedance. And this is where you want it to be. This is your premium selection. When you're operating with these uh, one quarter inch jacks, there's some um, there's some level of uh, sound that you're going to be missing. It's a, it's definitely much better to be operating through your XLR than it is through these low, uh, these high impedance. So that's just something that I uh, wanted to throw in there before I forgot. So that's what a direct box you could do that. You can inject anything with a quarter inch uh, cord. So. We are looking at the microphone now. Everything is powered on, but we have no level set. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to show you, this is the main level for this channel. And we're just concentrating on this strip right here. Don't worry about the rest. We'll worry about that later. I'm going to turn on the effects button for now. And I'm going to turn this up to unity, which is zero. On most boards, you'll definitely want to try to get your level here on zero. That's called unity, which allows the board to be as hot as possible and transmit the, the best signal and let the board work in the most optimum situation. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the levels on the mic. And up here you'll see uh, these four buttons here. Just concentrate on this one. Same thing for the rest of them here. We're going to set the preamp gain. Now what I want you to concentrate on is the light down here. There's a little light that's called a clip light and it's red. Now I'm going to try to zoom in on that just a bit and hopefully you'll be able to see it. Now I'm going to start turning up the levels and I gotta get the mic situated here and excuse, oh, excuse the uh, computer I'm hitting the keyboard here. Now I'm going to start turning up the uh, gain here and we're hopefully going to see the light come on uh, which is telling you that the signal is getting hot. Test, 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 test now you see the light coming on there. Now what I'm talking, I shouldn't want, I shouldn't have that light coming on as often as that. So I'm going to back it. Right now it's right up on bust, right up, right up on full. Check one two, test one two, test test one two. Check check check, check one two, test one two. Check. I basically got this button at about, uh, um, it's at about eighty percent now, and I'm happy now that this here light is not coming on. But if I speak loudly, check check. With a hot signal, then your clip light comes on. Now, some people would like would not like this light to come on. It's okay for the light to come on. Check one, two, but you don't want it. You don't want it to be coming on too often. You you want the light to be off more than it is on, basically. But some people will not like this clip light coming on at all, so they'll back that off a bit more. Check, check, check. Now it's barely coming on now, so we'll leave it at that. <clears throat> now, I basically need to put everything flat here. What I've done here, if you'll notice, put the mic away for a second. I've put the EQ flat, which is straight up. It's not totally off and it's not fully on. This is the high, mid-range, and low. This is a low cut. Now for vocals, you might want to put this low cut on. You don't need the lows for vocal. But for the, for the purposes of this demonstration, I'll just leave it out for now. Okay, now we're looking for a, a signal coming out of the power amp, so uh, the power speaker. So now I'm going to go to the main gain, which is here. Get a better zoom out a bit here. Here we go. Now I'm going to turn up the main gain. Turn all these down. We don't need these on. I have my unity set here. Now I'm going to see if I can get a signal coming out of this board with everything flat. <coughs> Excuse me. Check one, two. Now I just turned this on one. It just turned on one and the system just fired up. That's pretty clear. It's not too bad. Now, first thing I want to talk about when we talk about this strip here, this channel. On some boards, on the older boards they didn't have this, but on this new board they have uh, different effects. Other than the effects over here, you have compression. Now some boards will have compression. Uh, they'll have a limiter, a gate, different things and they'll have it on every channel. This one just has compression. And basically what compression does is it takes all the signals, for instance, in bass guitar, it'll take the, the very deep and aggressive top strings of the, of the bass guitar, the deep sounds, the middle strings and the low strings, and even when you go really up far up on the neck to the high parts, it balances them out. 
It makes them all sound the same so that when you're playing, you're not kind of losing the bottom end or the, your volume on the, on the high strings, but on the low, you're being too aggressive. So what I'm going to do, you can also use this with vocals. I'm going to turn the compression on. Check one, two. And when this light comes on, it's actually being engaged. Check one, two. Check one, two. Now, barring that, you don't need to worry about compression. You can leave that off. Now, let's talk about EQ. We have high, mid, and low here. I'm going to sweep in a little bit of high now. Just a little bit. Check one, two. You probably don't hear the difference, but I do. And for vocals, if you want your vocals to have more meat, what they call meat and potatoes, a bit uh, more volume, mid-range is probably be one of the key things for vocals. So we're going to boost that just a slight bit. A little bit more than the uh, high. And I don't think we need to adjust the low, but just for this demonstration, we'll turn it up. Test one, two. Check one, two. That's way too much. We'll set that back there. Okay. I'm going to switch off this mic. For the time being. So basically now we have this channel ready to, um, to send a signal out. Now, and it is going out to the board. So we actually just mix down this channel here. Now, I might want to use some effects. I'm going to go to uh, the paperwork on this mixer uh, and turn to the part where it says effects. Now, this is just something a little bit beyond what you might need to know. Right now, the effects that I have on is number 25, and number 25 is a gated reverb long. What I'm going to go for is... Uh, I'm just going to go for a delay, and that would be uh, 30. Let's roll to 30. So we're going to roll 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 more channels up to 30, depress the button, and now that effects is on. This is the actual control for the effects. I have that set to 0. I'm going to boost that just a little bit. It doesn't matter so long as you have something in there for your disc channel to pick up. Now that I have disengaged, I'm going to turn this on again. Turn the mic back on, and I'm going to turn the effects up to zero. I probably won't need that much, but I'll just give an example. Now I can dial in as much or as little of the effects that I have. Check, check, check. Now you probably don't hear that. I'm going to turn it up. I'm just going to make sure that I have the right effects because some of these effects will not uh, transmit properly through vocal. Oh no, I'm in the wrong one. Sorry about that. Uh, let me go to 40. 40 is a delay. That's the problem. I had it on uh, a short ambience, and that's not going to work. Now, same thing. We have this uh, effects turned on, and it's uh, adjusted on this channel. Check. 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 One, two. Check. 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 So I can dial it in. Check. One. One. Or take it off altogether. Check. One, two. A bit more. Check. 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 So basically that's how to set up the effects on this board. And there is, you can look at the list here, reverbs, modulation, multis, special effects ones, and you also have uh, early reflection and delays. So there's, there's like a hundred different sound effects you can use on this board. So technically now, this is this board is ready to um, to be used. We have one channel running now, the vocal. Now you might want to add a guitar. For me, I would be adding a bass. I would use my DI that I've shown you here. I plug my guitar into the input, like I showed you, and I would take an XLR out and go into here, channel two. I would set the compression to where I would want it. Um, no, probably no effects. I may want to use some effects in the future, but no effects, so I'd have this turned off. And then I have the three band EQ, uh, basically high, mid, and low, and I would adjust that. And then you, before I even did that, I would be, with this turned off, I would play the guitar and turn this preamp gain until the light comes on or it doesn't come on at all, but there's a signal coming out. So I'd have a little bit of clipping on this light right here, the second one. Then I would uh, turn up the volume and do my EQing. Would I want to add some high, mids, or lows, or take them away? 
Uh, with bass, you, you might want to leave the low cut out so you get the low signals. On vocals, you might want to take take that and take that out, so you don't get that low um, that low rumble on your vocals. So I would leave this out for bass, but definitely take put the low cut on on the vocal. So then I got channel two done, and you go so on and so on down the road. You would uh, put another vocal in here if you want. You could uh, set up uh, two uh, mics to a set of drums, like an overhead and a kick. Put a put a SM58 overhead, like about uh, three feet above the drums, and uh, pick up the whole kit. And then you can have another one here set up for uh, for the kick. Then you can add keyboards here, left and right. You can have two keyboards or a stereo if you want to go stereo on one keyboard or two keyboards. And you have these channels here: five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven, twelve. So you can add all stereo channels here, or guitars, or whatever you want to do. Now there's headphones out here. There's an effect send, and uh, of course, effects send and return there. <clears throat> and here's the other important thing uh, with this mixer, you can add a set of monitors. So, if you had a powered monitor on stage, you de you'd do the same thing as what we've done here. We've plugged into here, but we'd plug the monitor in here. There's a left and right, same thing like here, but this is for this button right here, the main section down here for your control room. So, you can either have it run to a control room or you depress it for effects. Uh, and you would turn this up to set your volumes on stage the same way that we did the out front speaker for the DXR10 Yamaha so that's the way you would run monitors and you can have more than one you can have two and you can daisy chain them you can connect either you know, one to the other the only other thing that you might want to do is you might want to do some recording so you take uh, your left and right here your RCA jacks this is out you can send a signal whatever everything's mixed down you can send a signal out to a CD player or a tape player or a MIDI, whatever it is, or send it into a jump drive, the signal, whatever you want to do, and uh, record. You can also inject the signal here through RCA jacks, and, uh, and that would be how you do that. And then you just use these buttons here. Uh, either you're going to use it to for control room or, or you're going to use it for mixing down your uh, tape player, your CD player, and you'll be using this volume. The other way, the only other thing you could do is you could also send um, left and right from a CD player into these channels if you get the proper chords, and you can adjust your levels on uh, on here. So that's that. This here is the pre uh, preamp. This is the phantom power button here. So when this is glowing, you have phantom power, and basically that's for your condenser mic uh, situations. Uh, without, without this, I would need to put a battery into my DI box, the box I showed you here. It has a place for a, a battery, 9 volt battery. But if I turn on phantom power, it gets power through the mic cord here. Once I hooked up the cord and plugs it into here, it'll get all the voltage it needs through phantom power. That's what phantom power is all about. It's a very neat, a very neat uh, thing to have on the board. <clears throat> anyway, that's about all. I think I could cover uh, with regards to a basic setup of a Behringer board or a mixer board. That's uh, that's pretty much uh, everything I think I've covered. I hope that helps you uh, understand uh, how to do a do a basic setup for when you're doing sound for yourself or uh, or if you're out doing a gig in a club or something. Thank you guys and gals for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. Please rate the video and uh, please subscribe.